Hello and welcome to another uh, video. So here we're going to talk about the RSA uh, signature scheme. Uh, so we already had an introduction uh, on the digital signatures. And this is one of these examples for digital signatures, the RSA. Now, if you haven't watched those videos, I'll suggest you watch those because then this one will make more sense that way. So as you can suspect, the RSA uh, signature scheme is going to be based on the actual RSA uh, encryption decryption uh, scheme that we saw earlier. So this is based on the RSA encryption and is actually the most widely used digital signature in practice. So for example, in your browser, you will have the RSA digital signature. Um, so it was uh, first described in 1978 and it was a paper that was called a method for obtaining digital signatures and public key crypto system. If you look at the authors of that paper, that's exactly the three people who actually invented the RSA encryption. And actually this paper has a description of the uh, that encryption algorithm together with the, the digital signature, which is the RSA digital uh, scheme. Um, so it was a while ago and it was described there in that paper. It was in the uh, Journal of Communications of the Association for Computer Machinery. So, so this is kind of like the historic here background about when is the, this digital signature came out, came to be, and we're gonna see in a second that it's gonna be quite similar uh, the setup for uh, this RSA signature, very similar to what we did with the RSA encryption, and it actually it's gonna be the setup at the beginning is gonna be exactly almost exactly the same thing that we have to do. So the first thing that we have to do is, if you remember when we, you have to do a digital signature, the sender has to do the setup. The sender has to uh, decide on a public key and a private key. So he can actually sign the documents or the messages with the private key. And the public key is gonna be used to actually check that the signature is actually coming from Bob. So Bob, which is the sender in this case, he's the one who's gonna send the message with the signature, generates the same RSA keys in, that were used for RSA encryption. So exactly the same things that we did for the RSA will be done here in a digital signature. So just to refresh your mind on what we actually did for the generation of keys, which is a public and a private key. Um, so let's just look at and refresh what that was. So let's recall that. So the RSA key generation. So what is the output of this algorithm? Or what is the thing that Bob has to generate out of this? He has to, he has to generate a public key, which is remember in the RSA, it's a pair of numbers. The first number we denote it by N and the second number is E. This is the public modulus N and this is the public exponent. And a private key is a key that in this case, uh, will be Bob, the only one who can, who will in theory have access to that private key. And so this, this will be the output. So, so how do we get them? So as, as the same as we get these outputs from the RSA, exactly the same thing. So what we do is remember, we have to choose two large primes, uh, P and Q. And by large uh, here, it means under today's standards will be 1024 bits, uh, bit length. So it will be two large primes. We compute n, which is the public modulus, which is just the product of these two prime numbers that we chose here. And then we compute the uh, Euler uh, function phi of n of those things. And then this is very easy to compute if we have the primes p and q. So phi of n is just p minus one, q minus one, this product that we have here. And so once we construct this n that is here, then we select e, which is the a public exponent, which is gonna be a number between one and phi n minus one, whatever this number phi n is here, in such a way that the the greatest common divisor between e and phi n is one. So basically the, the numbers e and phi n don't have any common factors. If you go back to the uh, videos for the RSA, this is exactly the same thing we did over there. So this is setup is exactly the same thing. This is just for a review. And remember that is called the public exponent. Now the private exponent is uh, the thing that Bob has to keep secret if he, want, if, if he wants to sign messages and other people authenticate 
those messages with that uh, uh, signature. So the computation of the private key D is solving this uh, linear congruence. So basically, once you choose E here with these properties, then you're going to find D in such a way that D times E is congruent to one module of E of N. And so we know everything, or Bob knows everything already. He knows E and he knows this thing here. And this modular um, equation here can be is can easily be solved, uh, for example, using the extended Euclidean algorithm, something that we have done uh, quite a lot during the class. All right, so remember, this is exactly the same thing as the RSA. All right, so, so how the things are done here? Now remember, on the side of Bob, which is the side of the one, the person who is gonna send the message. So in this particular case, we are saying that KPR, which is remember the private key is gonna be uh, D, and this is something that Bob has to keep secret. This, this is his private uh, key. And the public key, which is what we are denoting by KPUB, is this pair of numbers N and E, the, pri uh, the public modulus and the public exponent. So this is, anyone can grab this information, but only Bob is supposed to know this information. Remember, on the side of Bob, because Bob wants to send a message to Alice, what he has to do is he has to, well, first take the message, put it in a uh, signature algorithm, which is the general case that we were seeing. And remember that the signature algorithm takes as an input the message and the private key, which is in this case D. And the way that the signature is computed is just a simple modular exponentiation. So he's going to take the message M, which is of course a number, raise it to the D power modulo n and d here is the private exponent and n is the public modulus now if you see this computation here this computation uh, the only person who can do this in theory would be bob because he's the only one who can produce this modular exponentiation because he's the only one who knows m and d and is public so out of this algorithm what comes out is the signature so the signature for this specific message and remember the signature is attached to the message. So the signature cannot live in a sense without that message here. All right, so that's the signature algorithm. So then after that, what Bob is gonna do is of course he's gonna send the message together with the signature to Alice. Now there is something very important that I have to mention here. Um, if you see this setup that I have, this message M and the signature are on plain sight. And what I mean by that is uh, an attacker, which in this case we call it Eve, um, can actually look at this. In practice, what you need to actually need to do is once Bob uh, does this process, signs the message, which is the original message here, he has to actually encrypt this whole thing, the message and the signature, and send that the whole thing encrypted through the insecure channel. So Alice gets that. So to do that, they have to use um, a symmetric algorithm, which is more practical. And they will, of course, will have to have some kind of shared key. So for that, you need to do, for example, the Diffie-Hellman key exchange for that. So uh, the only reason I put the picture like this is to put it a little bit more uh, easier to understand. So in practice, remember, I'm going to say that again, is not sent like this, because then M will be clear for everyone. So you have to encrypt it first and then send it. So just to simplify the picture, this is what we have so far. So now that Alice gets this uh, message with the signature, she has to check uh, that this is an actual message from Bob. So he, she has to check whether or not this signature actually corresponds to that message. And so in the way that that is done it use, is using the, the verification algorithm that we talked about in the introductory uh, videos, which is uh, here, I have the picture over here. So on the side of Alice, Alice gets the message with the signature S. And remember this verification algorithm takes as an input both the message and the signature and the public key, which in this case is the modulus and the public exponent. So these two things. And the verification algorithm is again, just a modular exponentiation. So the only thing that we have to do is we take the signature S, uh, take it to the E power, and we can do this because this is uh, public E and modulo N, this is also public. So Alice can compute this 
and chick is gonna get a number m prime so some number after the modular exponentiation now what she has to do in order to check of uh, whether or not this message actually came from Bob is comparing this m prime to the original uh, message that was sent now if m prime is equal to m so it means this computation happens to be exactly as the message that was sent then return true means that this is an actual message from Bob if it happens to go the other way then it means it's not and so remember the output is always true or false for this verification algorithm so this is basically the RSA so the RSA uh, signature is heavily based on the actual encryption that we do with the RSA all right so a couple of comments uh, before we uh, actually finish the video is uh, if as I just mentioned before if m and m prime match which is they mean exactly the same as I mentioned here after Alice doing this module exponentiation Alice knows two important things and these are the important things that come out of this signature first of all is that the author of the message was in possession of Bob's key now uh, she doesn't know if this is actually Bob but whoever has B Bob's key can sign those messages now um, Bob, of course, is supposed to have access to that key, and he's the only one who has access to it. But in this case, so we're going to say it like this, and we call it uh, this kind of thing that is here, we call it message authentication. So Alice knows that the author is the author of that message was in possession of Bob's key. Whether it's either Bob or not, that's another matter. And the second thing that she also knows, which is also very important, is that the message M, which she received, has not been changed in transit. Now remember, we talked about this problem with the RSA that when you uh, actually encrypt with the RSA, it is possible that somebody actually modifies the message, an attacker, and then you receive not the original message that was intended, but something that was actually changed. So with digital signatures, uh, it is possible actually to solve just that problem, the problem of actually authenticating uh, the veracity of the message and in the sense that we can actually uh, check whether or not it came from Bob and also that the message was not changed during the transmission of that message and these are two important security things that are solved with this digital uh, signature so I will solve the video now and in the next video what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you an example with specific numbers of course they will be small because uh, we cannot do real um, I mean, we could do real uh, um, modulus, uh, 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 the exponent e and the private exponent d, but then uh, it will obscure uh, the procedure or the way we go about it. So I'll give you an example in the next video using small numbers.